Hello, and welcome back to Flying Failures, where we'll be looking at the Christmas Bullet. The Bullet is an aircraft many people have never heard of, but for those who are aware of its existence, it has garnered notoriety in aviation circles as by far the worst airplane design ever built, a criminally underdeveloped airframe that was able to dodge and defraud its investors and even the US Army. The Christmas Bullet takes its name from Dr. William Whitney Christmas who was born on September 1st, 1865, in Warrington, North Carolina. And while little is known of his early life, it is known that he joined the St. John's Military Academy in his youth before taking both a bachelor and master's degree at the University of Virginia, eventually receiving his doctorate in medicine from the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. in 1905. Christmas took a fascination in the progress and success of aviation, following the Wright brothers' pioneering flight at Kitty Hawk in 1903, but his initial attempts to enter into the market were highly dubious, and in 1914 he claimed to be the original designer of the modern aileron, even going so far as to place a patent, although there is little evidence to suggest Christmas was the first to come up with the idea, while the actual creator of the aileron design we take for granted today continues to be disputed. Regardless, this wasn't his first attempt to garner fame in the aviation world, having tried earlier to achieve credibility by stating he had created a prototype aircraft as early as 1908, and while this was conveniently lost in a crash, Christmas was able to earn an investment from thousands of rich American businessmen willing to put money on aircraft technology in the hope that they'd make some kind of profit. With several influential backers now spurred on by his claim that he'd supposedly built a second aircraft of his own design, named the Redbird, Christmas founded the Christmas Airplane Company based in Washington DC in 1910, and despite the investors having never actually seen either the Redbird or indeed any other of Christmas's supposed designs, Money continued to flow in, and confidence was high in his prospective future projects. Eventually, in 1912, the firm became the Durham Christmas Airplane Sales and Exhibition Company, and later the Cantilever Aero Company, after moving to Copenhagen, New York in 1918. The biggest investment for Christmas came when he convinced two brothers, Henry and Alfred McCary, to become his backers, followed by his procurement of construction space at the Continental Aircraft Company factory in Long Island his ability to win over investors and production floor space, being through an incredible proposal to use his upcoming designs to sneak into Germany and kidnap Kaiser Wilhelm II, his fantastic new aircraft intending to consist of a single-seat scout and a three-piece fighting machine. His first project was the scout design, which eventually became the infamous Christmas bullet, created entirely of wood with a veneer-clad fuselage that Christmas stated would reduce aerodynamic drag more than any other contemporary design while also claiming that he was the first ever designer to implement these construction materials and methods. In fact, by the time the bullet entered production, a majority of World War I German aircraft had adopted this design principle, and were busy fighting over the trenches of northern France and Belgium. Nevertheless, the Continental Company and his many duped backers were still highly confident in Christmas's proposals, and recommended him to the United States Army Air Service or USAAS, suggesting that they fit the prototype Liberty L6 engine to the aircraft, this engine being based on the highly successful Liberty L-12 engine, and capable of producing between 200 and 215 horsepower. Despite initial protests by the Army Air Service, to allow both a private citizen and manufacturer the use of the prototype, they eventually relented, and leased Christmas temporary ownership of the engine on the condition that it was only for ground use, a proviso promptly ignored as he prepared the bullet for its maiden flight. By far the most jarring design feature of the bullet were its lack of wing struts, braces or holding arms in order to keep the wings firmly attached to the fuselage, with Christmas's rationale being that control of the aircraft would be achieved by the wing warping to its flying surfaces, essentially flapping like a bird. This was compounded by the fact that the aircraft was constructed using wood and steel scrounged from the local area, not aircraft grade materials which had been specialist made. Some people, however, were able to see through the ridiculousness of the design and knew it was doomed to failure, one of those being chief engineer at Continental, Vincent Bernelli. Bernelli, who would later go on to experiment with lifting wing designs in the 1950s and 60s, attempted to implement changes to the design in order to make it actually airworthy, but was overruled by the management on multiple occasions, resulting in his resignation out of protest. The bullet was rolled out onto the field at Continental's Long Island factory for its maiden flight on an unspecified date somewhere between December 1918 and January 1919, with test pilot Cuthbert Mills at the helm, Mills being so enthusiastic about the success of the plane that he even brought his mother along to see the inaugural flight. Christmas's ruse had worked wonders, as investors and backers continued to inject cash into the project, 
unaware that Christmas had struggled to find a test pilot who was willing to fly the bullet, only choosing Mills because he was down on his luck. Finally, the tiny bullet soared into the sky for the first time, climbing higher and higher into the frigid air of the Atlantic seaboard. But anticipation quickly turned to terror as, after climbing to a few hundred feet, the wing of the bullet separated, and the compromised aircraft spiralled uncontrollably back to Earth, bringing Mills and the bullet to a premature end. Now faced with the wrath of the Army Air Service, Christmas desperately covered up the incident, using his massive influence to have aviation reporters and newspaper journalists write that the maiden flight was a resounding success, and that Mills had gone on to conduct another five highly successful test flights while praising the aircraft's handling and performance. Most of this information was supplied by longtime friend and Christmas admirer J.D. Van Villet, an aviation journalist who would continue to defend both inventor and aircraft as late as 1934, even going so far as to say that he was the creator of the first successful cantilever wing design aircraft, even though the Junkers J-1 predated the bullet by at least three years. While Van Villet did eventually admit that the bullet crashed on its maiden flight, he claimed it was due to pilot error rather than structural failure. For Christmas, though, the charade was far from over, and he once again went back to the Army Air Service to request further funding for a second prototype, after feeding them fraudulent information regarding the supposedly phenomenal success of the first, even being able to con them out of a second engine. The new bullet would eventually be powered by a Hall Scott L6, and was unveiled in March 1919, three months after the loss of the first bullet, this second aircraft, which was largely identical, being statically displayed at that year's New York Air Show with Christmas claiming it to be the safest, easiest plane in the world. While the airshow was an opportunity for Christmas to promote both himself and his plane, some journalists did partially see through his words, and were quick to note the aircraft's inherent flaws, with an article published by Flight Magazine commenting on the design's low factor of safety, while also going on to make false claims, probably based on statements by Christmas himself, that Britain and France had expressed interest in the bullet, with sizable purchase orders now flooding in based on the aircraft's apparently superb speed. One month after the show, Christmas was ready to test the second prototype, this time employing the services of World War I veteran Lieutenant Allington Joyce Jolly, who had fought with the French Air Force, but decided, unlike Mills, he wouldn't bring his mother to watch. On its first flight, the second prototype lifted off from the Continental Factory and immediately lost control, before plummeting from the sky and crashing into someone's barn, killing Jolly and destroying the aircraft. Again though, Christmas was able to cover up the accident, with the two McCarry brothers stating in an issue of Vanity Fair in May 1919 that the aircraft had a flawless safety record, but it was after this that all production and testing of the bullet was quietly brought to a halt, likely due to Christmas facing a cold realisation that his fraud would soon be found out. However, in a final blow against the Army Air Service, Christmas made a testimony to the House Select Committee on Expenditures in the War Department stating that the bullet outperformed European equivalents, even explaining that there was photographic evidence of the aircraft flying, although the lack of such evidence was attributed to a conspiracy by the US government, in which the original negatives had been destroyed. For the next three years, Christmas continued to issue patent after patent for individual design aspects of an aircraft which had been destroyed twice years earlier, eventually making millions of dollars off the backs of the US taxpayer, before calling a halt to the scam in 1923, billing the Army Air Service $100,000 for his patented wing design, or $1.5 million in 2020. After this, Christmas continued to make bold statements about other aviation projects or commissions, even stating that Germany had offered him $1 million to rebuild their decimated air force in the wake of World War I. In 1955, he took the role of Vice President for the General Development Corporation, a Miami-based real estate company that would become the largest land developer in Florida, before eventually being brought up on charges of fraudulent home sales, before the story of Dr. William Whitney Christmas finally came to an end on April 14, 1960 when he passed away from pneumonia at Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan, aged 94. Dying an incredibly wealthy man, Christmas never apologised or publicly stated his involvement in the deaths of two test pilots in his bullet, nor was he ever charged with manslaughter, as it was his conscious decision to allow test pilots to fly a plane which he knew was incredibly unsafe. While what few supporters the bullet had consider it to have been a victim of a design far too advanced for its technology, the reality was that the aircraft was doomed from the start, lacking fundamental parts of the airframe, which resulted in the obvious happening, costing the lives of two men, but earning a fortune for its dubious creator. <laughs>